everyone. Cheers. Welcome to the brewery. Might look a little different than uh, last time. There's actually something to look at. Yeah, so in our last video, uh, we were talking about maybe putting the cooler together. Uh, we've got a lot done in December. Josh and I have had a lot of uh, days of work together, as you can see. We'll go through some of that video here and explain how we did some of it. Yeah, so that cooler, I, I was a little worried about it. I didn't realize it was gonna be so, you know, snap and uh, play or, you know, uh, click together so easy. It, it was basically like a, a really big IKEA furniture set. I mean, it, it, it cooler wall C1 fits to C1 of the of the roof piece, and you just you find the matching uh, you know sticker. Um, thankfully, what was it? American uh, American walk-in coolers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a little plug for them. <laughs> they do a good job of prefabbing these things and making them easy to click together. So there's a. a there's a hole on the inside panels uh, that you take basically a really big Allen key in. And it is, I mean, it's like Ikea furniture. You just get it in there and then you latch it. So there's a little uh, hasper, you know, clasp that, that grabs the next panel and it sucks it together. It's like a dog lever with a pin on the other yeah. side and it sucks the panels in tight. It's pretty, uh, pretty clever. Those, I, I had no idea. I had a, a sneaky suspicion these coolers went together, as you can see in the video now. Um, that they went together fairly simple, but uh, we were kind of wondering how, you know, how on level our floor was, how much we were gonna be fighting with each of the panels, but luckily it, it kind of went really, uh, fairly smoothly. We had well, like one panel we struggled with, but then after that it just kind of clicked it, together. It yeah. still took us the majority of the day, just, you know, everything, everything. It's like, you, you know, starting the day sometimes takes 30 to 45 minutes, just pulling out the generator, setting up power, setting up, whatever, cleaning the workspace. So between that and figuring out, you know, what pieces go where and, you know, you get you get a couple things right, then you get a couple things wrong and you got to take it off and put it back again. Yeah. <laughs> figure it out. I think most of the time though was sort of measuring it out and making sure we were actually placing it exactly where it had to go. Right. Uh, according to the plumbing and I think we did end up pushing it back maybe two or three inches from what we had drawn. So the big thing was this uh, this this framed facade wall that we're, we're putting up around the cooler. We wanted a little more room for that, plus the, the barn board we're gonna put on it. So. Yeah, and the taps and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But We also made a little bit of compromise too on the bars. This here um, was gonna be out probably to about here where my hand is. So we, right, yeah, about that just maybe, about. Uh, probably here. So another six inches, we pushed it in a little. So it's a little tighter on that wall, but honestly, that's it's still workable. Um, but we did gain almost a foot out front here, only because of the plumbing that they put in the floor would have been outside the bar had we put it where the drawing was. So that was the only like little tiny snafu that we couldn't undo. So we just moved the bar forward is what it is. Well, I guess where we last left you guys, uh, I think that we showed them uh, just some of the raw, you know, just the rough stick framing of the, this, this little side pony wall bar. Uh, maybe a little bit of the plywood going up. Um, but yeah, we, we snapped to get, well, screwed together the top of the pony wall bar, that's complete. There's a partition wall back there. I think we may have covered that in the last video, but then, yeah, moving forward, uh, the first thing was the cooler. Uh, snapping that together and yeah oh and we did do the framing for the kitchen and right. the hallway we right. had changed our mind in the hall on the opposite side of where oh. we're standing now and on the cooler wall we were going to put the barn board uh on that wall as well and we thought well geez that's just a waste of all money. the way down the hallway yeah uh, so we just sheetrocked in there as you can see in the video that you're seeing us in there well so, and in the last video gary had talked about the landlord's uh you know his work his, his laborers he had come here you know framed us out two bathrooms and they weren't supposed to so kind of the way that deal worked out was well hey you know i framed out two bathrooms for you guys and you know gary we volunteered to you know you know what steve, steve let's just we'll, we'll hang the drywall don't worry about it so we ended up hanging the drywall and uh, in the outside of the bathrooms down the hall. And then since, while we're at it, what's a few more sheets going down the hall. So that's where the barn board decision uh, came in. And yeah. it was uh, like four more, four and a half more sheets, but yeah, it was a lot of drywall. It was a lot of work. But you know, after we looked at it, we were like, boy, you know, how much money did we just save by right. not using that reclaimed lumber right. barn board stuff that's, you know, quite expensive per square foot. Uh, on that wall that's really just a hallway into the bathroom. Right. So yeah, little changes like that we did. But the big deal, 
Here's this bar that you see mm -hmm. us leaning up against. That is, this was a big project. It was, it's been in my head for a while. I've tried to sort of, I don't know, put it on paper, but it, or, or express myself to Josh how it was going to come together. I tried to talk him out of it a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we didn't, it looks good now. Yeah, so we're basically, we have a river bar and uh, all of the wood that's going over the the pony bar here and the bar here is tiger wood. It's um, it patinas, but when it comes out, it's good. It's a mixture of sap wood and sort of like it looks almost like Brazilian cherry, but with lighter and darker tones. And it's kind of zebra a little bit, almost like Australian cypress. Uh, Going to be a little hard to work with, so we'll start out with fresh blades, fresh saw blades. Uh, when we're doing that and that will cover and wrap this. So it'll wrap the front and cover the top. So as Gary was saying, uh, Tiger Wood's gonna come up over the front, let's call it front splash over the top and it's also gonna carry on this wood over uh, to the back. Uh, and then the middle here, um, that, sorry, that top layer is gonna be about another three quarter inch up and so that's also gonna be uh, beveled down. So we're gonna have, this. there's two layers of uh, beveled wood here. We're gonna have a third layer. So this, this river bar is gonna get a little bit wider and a little bit deeper um, by putting that top layer of tiger wood on. And then what we're gonna do down this center is uh, it's gonna be a colored, uh, a colored epoxy. Um, I think we're almost 100% on the seafoam uh, green look. Um, if not that, some sort of a blue. Um, but we're gonna pour a heavy pour down the center of this thing of uh, blue and then what uh, if we're feeling adventurous enough what you can do too once that's poured you could take an accent color whether it's black or white and you you kind of drizzle it in um, and some of the videos we've watched they'll take like a paint stick and you kind of kind of manipulate it into the pattern you want um, and so that's kind of the idea with with the center but there's a lot of drying a lot of you know a lot of curing time a lot of sanding um, and then once it's all done, all of everything, tiger wood and all, is going to get an epoxy layer on top as well. So yeah, like Josh was saying, the, this part here, uh, we were kind of trying to figure out how we were going to come this come to this corner here because uh, how the wood's going to end up meeting. So we decided to do a herringbone here on the end. Uh, it, it's the easiest for us, and uh, probably going to look kind of cool as long as we can, you know, get the joints nice and tight. So, Pull it off, yeah. Yeah, so uh, hopefully we don't waste too much of that tiger wood because uh, that's being shipped from across the country. That same tiger wood is actually, like I said here, going on the pony bar as well. Um, nothing is elaborate there, no, no, uh, no river bar there. As you can see, the, the construction of the bar was pretty, you know, the video running in the back here, uh, pretty standard construction, but where, Things got a little different for us is the tray. We built a tray and then we put these little sticks about four inches apart um, uh, because uh, we were cutting them, I think, at uh, an inch and a half or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, inch and a half. And so there's not a lot of meat there. So we ended up putting them four inches apart because we were also going to put uh, some um, 80 20 bars in, in, the, in between them every so often and then hard screw those, those uh, metal bars into the, the base and then also into the face of both the front and the back of the bar to keep it from cupping or bowing. Uh, so we feel like this, this bar is like coyote ugly strong. You know, <laughs> it's like you can get up and dance on this thing. It's solid. We've already both well, we've been, stood on yeah, it a few times. Yeah, we both stood on it just <laughs> to do things or get things from above the cooler. Anyway, it's uh, uh, it's super sturdy. We are real pleased with the way it came out. It's uh, we used a laser level there. I don't think you can see it in the video, other than maybe something clipped to a a step stool. But that's mm. a laser. We're shooting the laser down the front and the back to make sure those little three and a half bars that we made and ripped down every four inches apart. We made sure that the face of it was laser point on, so that when we secured the front of the two by four, there wasn't any warping and cupping. It was a, just a laser line straight bar face and we pulled it off because it, it is laser it's straight. straight. Uh, yeah. It's straight. It's um, straight. One of the finishing looks that we'll go for too, I mean, aside from the epoxy finish and the tiger wood top, 
um, at least on the customer side, at least on this main bar, um, it, it, actually both bars we're gonna have this is, you know, like, like you see in a lot of bars, we'll have the little purse hooks for women and then we'll have um, power outlets under here uh, for customers for their phones. And then finishing touch, throw some LED lights, just like these, but just under here. So the customer side is lit uh, as well on both sides. I think that'll add a nice finishing touch. Yeah, the reason why we put the LED lights in here is just because they had epoxy, that tinted epoxy, the deep pour, it's a stone coat, uh, I can't remember the name of the company, but it's it's a special kind of epoxy that you can deep pour up to two and a half inches at, at per, per pour, uh, but it does have a slow curing time so it doesn't crack. So that that will get poured uh, over two days and then uh, probably set for a week before we even coat the top. Uh, just to make sure there isn't any shrinkage uh, that we have to fill in. These lights will shine up through that, that epoxy that's gonna be tinted, but it's, not gonna, it's gonna be almost opaque. It's gonna be a, not gonna be a solid color. So we'll be able to manipulate the LED lights underneath to get the, the exact color we want or look we want through whatever color we decide. Mm -hmm. I think we discussed seafoam, but we'll be able to change that color too with these LED lights. Right. Uh, somewhat so we can play with that a little bit and see what really looks nice yeah you can see what because these leds I and mean, they do anything from white to purple red blue green yellow so you know if you turn on the bright white underneath let's say a seafoam color it might look different than if you turn these things on red red blended with seafoam might look pretty cool too i don't know so we'll, yeah. we'll be able to play yeah, with that be some weird aqua, aqua <laughs> green or something um the, the last surprise Oh, that yeah. we had from our landlord. Uh, so the outside of this building has this corrugated steel, uh, corrugated uh, metal that is way nicer than what you get off the shelf at Home Depot. Oh yeah, and, and stuff uh, is, <laughs> it's rugged and thick and yeah. heavy. And it, you know, uh, the stuff at Home Depot, somebody could kick it with, right. you know, some real heavy steel tip boots. Yeah. Probably put a dent in it, you know. Yeah. You, you're not putting a dent in this stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, on, on the discussion of, you know, you know the, the, the video series of, so you want to open a brewery kind of thing, it's like, hey, uh, Gary and I have talked about it. It's like with new construction, he's talked about, you know, it's been in our favor, we haven't paid rent yet. Sometimes you get free spare, spare materials that the, uh, the, the developer overbought and he just needs to get rid of it. And that's what happened here. That's what happened here, yeah. So he just gave stuff, it to us. Yeah, this stuff worked out and um, it looks way better. And mm -hmm. It's more heavy duty, it's gonna last a lot longer. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty pleased with the way, we're pretty pleased with the way it turned out. But you know, it's something that we really thought hard and long on and we planned and to be honest with you, a couple of times we took part of the bar apart, not this top part, but the base, where we were just doing something and we just totally like, didn't think of this one thing and we were like, wait a minute, yep. we gotta do this. Back out all the screws. Back out all the <laughs> screws. Thank God we didn't glue that part of it. Uh -huh. And then, uh, you know, rethink it and uh, here we are. So uh, also today they finally connected the power to the building mm -hmm. uh, through the transformer. So there's power to the building now. Of course we don't have power in because they don't have any of the breakers in yet, but at least now we have power to the building and also water uh, is to the building, it's just turned off. Oh, yeah, right, so uh, Josh and I were trying to figure out how we're gonna run our glycol lines and uh, some of the Cat5 cable to the to the bar and the speaker wires, uh, et cetera. Uh, communication wires from the control panel to the fermenting vessels. Uh, yeah, so we decided uh, it was a pretty elegant fix and we actually still used more of that rack material. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff has the been invaluable. Keeps on giving. Yeah, I'll have Josh. I'll walk you through that in a second here. So our setup, you know, the, the main bar is an island, and there's no the concrete's already poured. So we're not going under. We're not going on top of concrete. We're not going at hip height. The only other option is to come over and down. So uh, for our main bar, for our power, for our our service side outlets. Um, they're gonna feed all the main power from our, our, our box up and over, and then they're gonna bring it down. And to get to the bar, they're gonna run their, their outlets here, drop a conduit here and in the side of the bar so that we can run a conduit underneath and, and hook up our outlets on our side. Uh, same goes for Cat5 for the, the POS systems. Uh, the the Wi-Fi, you know, the router and all that. Stereo. Uh, the stereo, right. We got the speaker wire hanging right here already. Uh, so that, that's all gonna follow this trough here and come down here. Which we built. 
Right. With rack material we cut up, <laughs> welded. You can kind of see the weld right uh -huh. there. And then uh, painted. Yeah, and, uh, and then for the glycol, and uh, uh, you know, the wires going from the control panel, we, we you saw the kitchen hood before, but this is what it looks like inside the framing. And then we're in the bowels. Where right now, <laughs> it's just storage and shit. Of course, Manny's in here. Uh huh. Um, that back in that corner is a three um, corner sink. Right. And then our hand sink and the water heater. We the also uh, we also had an on the fly decision about where this door was going to be. Yeah, originally the door was going to be on this side of the wall here, coming in this way. Then we decided to bring it in this way. So that was a last minute change. So what you're looking through is the kitchen door frame into the first or oh, the second bathroom back there. So, and that's the hallway. And then this is inside the cooler, which we just stored the CIP in there. But you can see we've, we've uh, got a good size cooler, it's 14 by 10. Um, see that fan unit hanging there? I got my light in the way. Yeah. So that was fun hanging that too. Yeah, we had a <laughs> lot of yelling back and forth. Yeah, the air conditioner, uh, the condenser unit on the ceiling of the cooler, and then this um, the cooling unit in the inside. And then we still got to run the condensate line, which is basically that little nipple at the bottom there. Yes, I said nipple. Um, <laughs> there's a tube that connects to that, and then it runs down the side, and it's basically. What drips off when things... Um, it's removing the humidity for yeah, the lawn. Yeah, for the condensation. It'll drip, and you don't want it dripping in the cooler. And with the city, with the city, they don't want that dripping into the floor drain. As you can see there, there's a floor drain in the, right. the center of our cooler. Uh, it's just got a cover on it now, but it'll eventually have like a drain cover, which is cool. So if beer explodes in there, Mm -hmm. It won't, you know, Close mess up. it down and squeegee it in. Yeah, it won't mess up the whole house, you know, just, just in here. One thing that I discussed with Gary was, you know, because we don't, I've been in coolers that where people are just chasing mold constantly, um, and it, it, we just finished this today. Uh, there's a vinyl cove base that goes all around the, the base of this cooler, uh, and inside and out. And I told Gary, I go, look, we're going to be, you know, mopping and chasing leaks, and there might be, you know, some beer explosions. I don't want to be chasing mold, and so we're going to caulk everything to the floor, inside and out, um, so that you know when we have the inevitable <laughs> leak or something like that, we're not going to we're not going to have a, a filthy cooler. It was important to, to me. Yeah. Well, bleach goes a long way. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is looking out the service window. Um, service window, I guess. Yeah, it's a kitchen. Yeah, it's a service window. Kitchen service window. Yeah, yeah where you hand the food out through. And it's not going to be customers coming up and getting it. This is you know strictly employee Employees. side service window. Sure. Yeah. I was just telling Gary before the video you know started is like you know as far as like the big heavy strenuous tasks. We're starting to put those in our rear view. Now we can start to focus on, uh, we can allow ourselves to focus on some of the more finer details um, because we're not, gonna, we're, not, we're not gonna pour any of this epoxy or do any of this stuff until all the outside vendors are out and gone and we have this place to ourselves. Uh, just like we're not gonna hang you know, TVs on our cooler until they're out and gone. But um, one plan that we do have, uh, or I think it's the plan now, is uh, there was a whole lot of debate about what, how many TVs, what size, what were we gonna do? We already bought them. We, we already bought three. Uh, we bought three TVs, four. 70 inch. Well, we have four. Uh, we have four. There was an old one from Gary's house that we were gonna use. So we had four and we thought, okay, we're gonna put four 70 inch TVs up here. And then we were thinking, well, which ones are gonna be uh, untapped beer menus and which ones are gonna be you know, TV, sports. Um, and they were too big. They were too big. Yeah, they were too big. And so it, we wanted the TVs to be, you know, not only the, the, like the, 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 if there were sports on, we wanted that to be viewable from all angles. And you just kind of can't do it with this bar 
you know, a square bar you know, on, a, on, a, on a, you know, a 90 degree square, you know, cooler. And so, and, and, and it was important to Gary to obviously also have uh, two TV menus with our beers. So we're gonna have, I believe it was the 70 inch on that side. On a swivel. On a swivel, uh, a, a, you know, a TV mount that swivels, articulates. Uh, and so that'll be whatever's on TV. Uh, we're gonna have here, I think it was 50 or 55 inch. 55 inch. On each corner will be a 55 inch here. for the uh, beer menu. And here, basically right above the beer taps. Right, and actually it'll be right in front of where you order because we're gonna have probably the, the, the POS system here and right there. And right, right above the beer taps. And then, and then a 70 inch over there. So that takes care of two of the TVs we bought. Uh, the, the spare 70 inch that Gary had, you're not gonna see it, but you saw it in a previous video, uh, Gary hanging the sign just below it. Uh, we, we talked about hanging a TV there, so people at that end can have something to look at over there. And then of course, the fourth and final one up in the mezzanine. Um, on the wall. On the wall, where you can have more of a private loungy area. Might put an Xbox up there. Might put my Xbox up there. I don't know yet. Well, yeah, and you got the, you got the uh, arcade, arcade game Arcade game at the house. Yeah. A lot of stuff that's at my house is gonna end up being in the bar. Yeah, so the biggest thing was like, we want everyone to have access and a comfortable viewing angle at a TV. So it ended up being more TVs than we thought. But luckily the 55 inch class TV, I mean the 70 inch TV is 70. really affordable, but the 55 inch extremely affordable. Yeah. Um, not a bad thing, with all the money that we've saved, it's not a bad pivot to have to buy a couple more fairly yeah. inexpensive TVs. And when you were up here ordering a beer, I mean, you basically, you're looking at a 55 inch TV from six feet away maybe, right. at tops, right. and you can't see that. You're old like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, honestly, just with the with the money we saved in this corrugated material, we could have bought 10 TVs. <laughs> yeah, not really, but. So in the next video, you'll probably see us working on. Um, probably do some painting. Yeah, there's gonna be some painting. That's kind of boring. It probably won't show much we'll of that. Do some uh, mounting of sinks. Yeah, we have to mount our sinks. Uh, the Tiger Wood should be in probably next week for this. Um, we'll probably do it because um, We'll probably mount it on here. That's going to be time consuming. The only because we got to be very precise with everything. And um, then uh, we'll wait to sand it when the time comes, when most of the people are out of here and not damaging our shit. <laughs> so um, then we'll start sanding it um, and getting it ready for, for epoxy. Um, probably, probably running some of the glycol plumbing. Yeah, you'll see some of the glycol plumbing, us setting the tanks in place. At least preliminarily getting things in place. We need, yeah, like you said, we need to hook up that condensate line in the fridge. That, by the way, is gonna run out of the fridge, up and over the kitchen door, out of the side of the kitchen, and then up behind all the fermenters. Well, we outside. have to use a pump up. But. Right, we gotta, yeah, we'll use a condensate pump. Luckily, <laughs> that's a thing. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, that'll that'll run all behind the fermenters. So we get, we don't just have glycol going back there. We we've got condensate too. Yeah, the um, I don't know what this municipality will not allow you to put your condensate line in your drain. Right. It has to just run to the outside of the building and drip on the ground. <laughs> um, Weird. Bizarre, but whatever. <laughs> you know, you've got to jump through their hoops. Yep. They still haven't hung our sign up. I don't know if they're bitter. I would be. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we, we have a, a, a gigantic laundry list, uh, more than we can care to recap right now, but um, we'll have some stuff for you guys to tune into. Yeah, so look forward to the probably more of the brew house setup stuff, maybe a little bit of the Tiger Wood install. Uh, we've got chairs up on the mezzanine we got to assemble. We probably won't show you that. It's all boring <laughs> stuff. But there's all kinds of that stuff going on in the background, and uh, so look what we did in a month. Yeah. <laughs> wait till wait till next month's video. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, we've been so busy, I haven't even had time yeah. to put together this footage. Yeah. We we'll probably broke this up into two videos. But yeah, anyway, okay. cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. Yeah.